Our Gospel reading is from John chapter 20, verses 19 to 31. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. Many years ago I studied John's Gospel as part of my A-level religious studies. In the UK system, A-levels are the final examinations before university, and I studied maths, physics and religious studies. The key verse of John's Gospel was this one. It explains why the book was written, so that the reader might believe that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of God, and have life in his name. The passage describes the many actions and teachings of Jesus' life, death and resurrection as signs pointing to who Jesus is. Now John's Gospel was not written for historical interest or for the author to sell books. It was written so that people would come to believe in Jesus. The ultimate sign of who Jesus is, is the resurrection. In this week's Gospel reading, we have Doubting Thomas encountering Jesus. He had said he would not believe unless he actually put his hand in Jesus' side and felt the nail prints in his hands. But when he actually encounters the risen Jesus, his doubts and analytical demands are thrown aside and he declares, My Lord and my God. His doubts were quite understandable. Why should he believe such an unlikely event unless he had actually met the risen Jesus? For us too, we can only come to believe in the resurrection when we encounter the risen Jesus in our lives when he becomes a reality, something which is real, not just something read about or seen for other people talking about. It has to be something real in our lives. We are people of the resurrection. We are people who worship a risen Lord. This week the Coptic Church and most churches in Egypt are celebrating Easter. Today is their Good Friday, so we are ahead of them. But in reality, 
whatever calendar we follow, we are all followers of the risen Saviour. We should be one of the signs that Jesus is risen. We should be the hands with the nail prints that show Jesus' reality in the world. If we fail to be that sign, then people will not see Jesus. In our reading from Acts, the groups of believers are described as being of one heart and soul, sharing everything, their money, their possessions, their time, everything. It says there was not a needy person among them. They were not only sharing their income, but selling their property, using their capital to support each other's needs. In the middle of this passage about money comes the statement, With great power the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. I have always thought that testimony referred to preaching, to teaching the word, to speaking about what God has done in our lives. But here it comes in the middle of a passage about lifestyle, about how they use their money and finances. Their testimony was how they lived their lives, how they cared for one another. And this testimony was not just evidence of how nice they were, but it is described as their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. Now I am sure they use words too. And we are told that they were powerful when they preached the death and resurrection of Jesus. But their testimony was not words alone. It was seen in how they lived their lives together. We at St. Andrews have a problem. We want to be united as brothers and sisters. We want our lives together to be a testimony to the resurrection power of the Lord Jesus. We want others to say and to say, see how they love one another as they did of the early disciples. However, we come together to worship on a Friday morning and then are separated by the traffic of Cairo for the rest of the week. Sitting in a row listening to a sermon is not a way to get to know one another. This is why our fellowship time and Bible study following the service are so important. We have our Sunday night evening prayer service when we can meet together again, but for many this is difficult to attend. The Tuesday night Skype prayer meeting is good as anyone with a computer can join in from anywhere in Cairo and indeed anywhere in the world, but it is not the same as actually being together. This is why social activities are important and even events such as cleaning the church help to bring us together. Who would think that a church cleaning day would be testimony to the resurrection? But it is, especially in a country where people are very conscious of their status and cleaning is seen as a low-class activity. It shows that we are one body together. We testify to the resurrection not just by what we say but much more powerfully by what we do, by who we are. This is why I hope we can soon rearrange our anaphora retreat as it is so important to spend time together to be the people of God. We are not described as the bodies of Christ but the body of Christ. We are one body. We are not described as brides of Christ, but as the bride of Christ. The church is one living organism in relation to Jesus. From scared and defeated followers, the disciples were transformed into apostles, ones who were sent out. However, they were not sent out alone. They went out together as part of the church, making new bodies of believers, around the known world. When Jesus first appeared to the disciples in the upper room, he breathed on them and gave them the Holy Spirit. And after his ascension on the day of Pentecost, 
they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And it was this which gave them power and courage to change their lives, so that not only did they preach the resurrection, but they also lived the resurrection. Are we a living testimony to the resurrection of Jesus? Do we exhibit the fruit of the Spirit listed in Galatians chapter 5? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. It is through us that people can see the truth of the resurrection. As I have said before, I wear this cross when preaching, but not when I am at work, teaching or in the street. Somehow I feel held to a higher standard when wearing it. Even when I go out into the street by the church to buy a can of Pepsi or some water, I am conscious that wearing the cross I represent Christ and the church. However, perhaps we are fooling ourselves if we think that we don't always represent Jesus, especially in Egypt, where religion is seen as so important and where we know we are always being observed by those around us. Thomas believed because he saw the risen Jesus. The apostles preached the resurrection of Jesus with great power, not just because of the courage given to them by the Holy Spirit, but because of the testimony of their lives. Let us pray that Jesus shines through us to the world. For if it's through us he shines, then people can truly see who Jesus is, that he is alive and that the resurrection is true. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen.